the 25th of June. On this day we celebrate the memory of the Holy Virgin and Martyr Fevronia. During the reign of Diocletian, Anthemus, the prefect of Rome, having fallen gravely ill, confided his son, called Lysimachus, to his brother Salinus. Three days after Antimus' death, the emperor summoned the young Lysimachus and told him that he intended to make him prefect of Rome, on condition, however, that he give proof of his fidelity by going to the east to persecute the Christians, as the rumor was circulating that he had been drawn to their cause by his mother. Lysimachus, being able to make no objection, set off with his uncle at the head of a strong force. Arriving in Palmyra, at the borders of Syria and Mesopotamia, Salinus put a great many Christians to death in the cruelest way, and thus acquired a reputation in the whole of the East as a bloodthirsty tyrant. Lysimachus, who had in fact profound sympathy for the Christians, was greatly troubled by this campaign, and suggested to his nephew, Primus, who was commanding the detachment of soldiers to let the Christians know they were coming so that they could hide. In Nisibis there was a women's monastery, where fifty consecrated virgins engaged in the struggle for virtue under the direction of the wise Brina. Among her disciples, Fevronia stood out. She was her own niece, twenty years of age, who had been brought up in the monastery from the age of two, and who was gifted with a radiant beauty enhanced by the grace of her virtues. One day a pagan girl of high birth called Hieria arrived at the monastery and insistently asked to speak with Fevronia. Her heart was so moved by her conversation with the young nun that they spent the whole night keeping vigil, shedding floods of tears. When she returned home, Hieria told about her visit to the monastery and begged her parents to receive the good news. Shortly after this, as Salinus was preparing to enter Nisibis, all the Christians, given prior warning by Primus, hid themselves in the caves and in the mountains. In the monastery, Brina prepared her disciples to confront death with courage for love of Christ, but some of the virgins, using the argument that even the bishop and the most influential Christians had fled, asked to also go and hide. Febronia exclaimed, By Christ the living God, whose spouse I have become, I shall not for all the world leave this place. Brina nevertheless left each of them to do as their own conscience dictated, and all the other nuns having given way to natural weakness, she remained alone with Febronia and Thomais. Trembling for the young Fevronia at the thought of the outrages that the persecutors would not hesitate to inflict on her delicate beauty, she reminded her of the admirable constancy that, a short time before, Saints Libya, Leonis and Eutropa had shown under torture. In the morning, Salinus ordered that all the Christians they found be thrown into prison and put to torture. Soldiers descended on the monastery, shattering the doors and finding only three nuns, drew their swords on Brina to make her tell them where her other disciples were. But Fevronia fell at their feet, begging them to kill her first, to spare her the sight of the death of her mother in Christ. Meanwhile, Primus arrived at the monastery, drove away the soldiers, and learning that the other nuns had fled, advised Brina and her companions to do the same. On his return to the Praetorium, he told Lysimachus that he had seen in the monastery a virgin of incomparable beauty, and suggested that he take her as his bride. But Lysimachus retorted that, having been ordered by his mother not to ill-treat the Christians, he had the more reason to keep himself from insulting a virgin consecrated to God, but to do all he could to protect her. The soldiers, having made their report to Salinus, vaunting Fevronia's beauty in their turn, he sent them to seize the virgin and have her brought 
without, however, allowing her companions to go with her. Thomais, however, managed to follow the escort in male garb. When they took Fevronia into the amphitheatre, where a large crowd had gathered, the magistrate, struck by her charm, set aside his grounds for accusation to suggest she marry his nephew, Lysimachus, with the promise that she would enjoy great glory in the city of Rome. But the saint replied with assurance that she was already promised to an immortal spouse who was awaiting her in his own palace and assured him that nothing would make her renounce Christ. Salinus in fury ordered that she be exposed naked to public derision. Having overcome the shame of our first parents and clothed herself in the new man, Fevronia assured the tyrant that, being stripped, she was ready to do battle, like an athlete against the devil and his demons. Four men, then, stretched her over a brazier that had been made to burn more fiercely by throwing on oil while four others thrashed her mercilessly in spite of the crowd that was asking for pardon for the delicate girl. Far from stopping, Salinus had her beaten the harder and the torturers left her half dead. As soon as she came to herself, Fevronia showed her scorn for the idolaters and was given over once more to the soldiers who lacerated her ribs. They then broke her teeth one by one, and as she still remained immovable, they cut off her breasts and burned her chest. Hieria, who was present in the crowd, raised cries of indignation and took the saint's side. She herself was immediately arrested, and fearing her high state and the people's reaction, Salinus did not put her to torture, and to show how he scorned her protest, had them cut off both of Fevronia's hands and one foot. The saint offered her hands to the sword, but the executioner, having to make three attempts to cut off her foot, inflicted such intolerable pain on her that she put her other foot on the block, begging him to have done. He cut it off, and as she remained in agony before the magistrate, without arms and without legs, he, wanting his dinner, ordered that she be beheaded then. On his return to the palace, that very night, Salinus was seized with madness, and he perished after banging his own head against the pillar. Lysimachus was left desolated after the death of the saint. He sent his soldiers to gather her precious remains and take them to the monastery, where Brina and her nuns received them with great lamentation. Then renouncing both fortune and career, he also went to the monastery followed by Primus as well, and also a large number of his soldiers. After having received holy baptism, they all became monks, and Hieria, baptized together with her whole family, became a nun in Brina's monastery. When her memory was celebrated every year after that, Fevronia appeared in the choir among the sisters, However, if anyone tried to touch her or to speak to her, she would immediately become invisible. When the local bishop had a new church built in honour of the saint, he asked to translate her relics. But when they drew near to the reliquary, an earthquake accompanied by claps of thunder repulsed their impudence, showing St. Fevronia's desire to remain in her monastery. They were only able to take away one tooth, which once placed in the new church, that one tooth only worked many miracles for the salvation and the health of the Christians. Blessings of the Lord is not from the ages of Asia. Amen. Glory to you, 
God, glory to you. Heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who are everywhere and filling all things, the treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us and cleanse us from every impurity and save our souls, O good one. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, cleanse us from our sins. O Master, pardon our transgressions. O Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. baptism am crucified and buried. I suffer for thy sake that I may reign with thee. For thy sake I die that I may live in thee. Accept me offered out of longing to thee as a spotless sacrifice. Lord, save our souls through her intercessions, since Thou art great in mercy. Traversing the waters on dry land and thereby escaping from the toils of Egypt's land, the Israelites cried aloud, proclaiming unto our God and Redeemer, let us now sing. O holy Mart of Evronia, pray to God for us. O Evronia, champion of the glory of Christ, grant me grace and enlightenment, that I may extol in song thy light bearing and venerable festival. Holy Mart of Evronia, pray to God for us. Thou mayest thy soul radiant by perpetual meditation on death, O Mart of Evronia, and then didst hasten unto the height of martyrdom being led unto Christ through many torments. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. After gloriously tilling the field of thy heart with ascetical labor, O martyr, thou didst reap martyry crowns, singing unto God through contest. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. He who by a command fashioned all things was incarnate of thee, O Mother of God, and the maiden of Evronia, piously longing after him, him, in him was offered up as a martyr. Lord, thou art the steadfastness of them that flee unto thee in faith. Thou art the light of all those in darkness, and my spirit sings thy praise. O holy martyr Pavronia, pray to God for us. In the spirit thou didst avail to bring low the tyrant's haughty brow and the godlessness of polytheism, O Pavronia. Holy martyr Pavronia, pray to God for us. O mighty hand, O master, thou hast now made a glorious Pavronia steadfast while contending as a martyr. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As thy body was cut asunder for the sake of Christ, O pure and all-wise maiden, thou didst cultivate the enjoyment of paradise, tilling it with martyrdom. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O oh, pure virgin, the glorious mother of Evronia found thee, the mother of God, as a help, and she put the tyrants to shame. Since thou didst long for Christ, who is comely in beauty, thou boldly wentest forth 
to the greatest of struggles, whereby thou didst utterly slay the author of wickedness. Wherefore rescue me from all his intricate meshes. Guide me by thy prayers to true and godly repentance, O martyr Febronia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. When John leapt in the womb of his mother, O pure one, by grace divine he recognized God who was carried in thine ever-virgin womb, and he worshipped him faithfully. Now I pray of thee with the forerunner, O virgin, pray unto the Word, to whom thou gavest a body, to save me thy servitor. Thou art my strength, thou art my power and might, O Lord. Thou art my God, thou who wast not absent from thy father's arms, thou Lord art my joy. Thou hast deigned to visit our lowliness and our poverty. To thee, therefore, I cry out with Habakkuk the prophet, Glory be to thy power, O friend of man. O holy martyr Thavronia, pray to God for us. Indeed, there was no sport at all, O old friend Thavronia, for being adorned with the pains of asceticism and the struggles of martyrdom. Thou diligently strove by means of both to be well pleasing to the longed for Redeemer and Beloved, O all blessed and godly minded maiden. Holy Martyr Febronia, pray to God for us. In thy tender youth, O Martyr, thou didst long after the ever flowing wellspring of love, who is the desire of all rational beings. And striving toward him, thou didst endure the pain of tortures, being burned with fire, and bereaved of thy members, O Febronia, boast of virgin. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Nurtured on the words of God, O divinely wise martyr, thou didst sacredly take in hand the sacred books, and by divine inspiration didst expound them to those who long for the word of salvation. And thou didst receive the reward of thy teaching when thou wast made rich with the glory of the martyr. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Thou hast been revealed to be the gateway of the light for all that are in darkness, O all blameless virgin. For thou hast caused Christ, the Son of Righteousness, the earnest circumscribable light, to flash forth in a circumscribed body, and Febronia, strengthened now with his fiery beams, has obtained the glory of the martyr. Wherefore hast thou deprived me and cast me the hapless one far from thy countenance, and the outer darkness has enshrouded and cast its gloom over me? Yet now I beseech thee, do thou convert me and direct me to the light of thy precepts, O Lord my God. O holy martyr Febronia, pray to God for us. Thou is made beautiful in the royal purple, woven for thee from thy blood. For when thy body was stripped naked, O Febronia, as thou stoodst before the tribunal of the judges, imitating the nakedness of Christ, Thou didst cast off the vesture of the passion. Holy Martyr Febronia, pray to God for us. Set a fire in soul with longing for thy spiritual bridegroom, O Martyr, and captivated with his undefiled beauty, thou didst endure the severing of thy hands and the painfulness of the wounds, O Febronia, boast of martyrs. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The flow of thy blood put out the flame of polytheism, O Febronia, and thine uprooted teeth plucked out all the air of the idols, and wrought for thee the joy of eternal delight. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. When thy feet were cut off, they trod the path of divine martyrdom, and passed over unto him that was born of a holy virgin. 
And now they joyfully walk about in paradise, O Virgin Fevronia, the Bride of God. Entreaty do I pour forth unto the Lord, and to him do I proclaim all my sorrows. For many woes fill my heart to repletion, and lo, my life unto Hades is now drawn nigh. Like Jonas do I pray to thee, raise me up from corruption, O Lord my God. O holy martyr Febronia, pray to God for us. The godless and insolent cruelty of the impious Solanus was overthrown when the universal providence of God required thy blood, O glorious Febronia. And because of thine endurance, the godly Lysimachus was saved. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The wise and God-bearing Brina, having brought thee up on her teachings, showed thee to be a divinely shining luminary, O maiden, and in no wise did she fall short of her hope, O Febronia, for she presented thee to Christ as an undefiled bride. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. The living bride chamber of the Master, shining like light with bright rays of virginity as a lily in the midst of a thorny tumult, the all-pure and majestic Theotokos is worthily glorified. In ascetic discipline, thou wast made fair as a virgin. Then, O famed Febronia, thou shonest forth as a martyr. With thy lamp in hand thou runnest unto thy bridegroom, having watched throughout the night of martyric sufferings. And since thou art crowned in glory, thou intercedest for them that praise thee with faith. The three Hebrew children in the furnace trampled on the flames with courage and great boldness. They turned fire to do and cried out with a great voice, Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, unto ages of ages. O holy martyr Febronia, pray to God for us. O modest Febronia, thou wells forth streams of healings for those who have recourse to thy temple with faith, and cry unto Christ, Blessed are thou, O Lord God, unto the ages. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Oh, how excellent is thy tradesmanship, O godly-minded martyr! Thou hast exchanged flesh and blood for the kingdom of God, O all-loaded one, while crying, Blessed are thou, O Lord God, unto the ages. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Thou dances with the congregation of the virgins, O admirable virgin Febronia, crying out to the mother of God and virgin, Blessed, O all pure, is the fruit of thy womb. The Chaldee tyrant, mad with rage, fired his furnace of blazing flame, seven times more hard against the worshippers of God. But seeing them kept in safety by a power greater than his, he then cried aloud, Ye children, bless the Creator, the Saviour and Redeemer. O ye priests, sing his praises, exalt him, O ye people, to all the endless ages. O holy martyr Febronia, pray to God for us. Thy memorial is now celebrated in shining splendor, O Febronia, blazing with beams that flash like lightning. For thou hast held converse with the light, and art become light-bearing, and thou dost cry, Bless the Creator of light and light bestower, O your children. O you priests, sing his praises, exalt him, O you people, to all the endless ages. Holy Martyr Febronia, pray to God for us. And thou was first made marvelous in asceticism, and was afterwards adorned in martyrdom, for thou didst run after thy beloved as a radiant maiden. And thy breasts, which were goodlier than wine, were cut off for the sake of piety, O all famed Febronia. And with the sweet smell of thy myrrh, 
Thou makes the faithful to be fragrant. We bless Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Lord. Weighed down with failings and compassed with the raging billows of passions, O, o Lord, in Fevronia, I flee to thy shelter, seeking deliverance from both, since thou art wondrous and elect unto the Master. Disdain me not as I cry out, but by thine intercessions, O godly minded one, pluck me out of the nets that destroy the soul. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. The tongues of the eloquent are not mighty enough to praise thee, O birth giver of God and bride of God, Mariam. For from thy virginal womb, which knew not what look, thou hast given birth unto the God over all, O pure maiden. And unto him, Fevronia now cries in song, supremely exalt him, O your people, to all the endless ages. The heavens were astonished and stood in awe, and the ends of the earth made were sore amazed. For God appeared bodily to mankind as very man. And lo, thy womb has proved to be vaster and more spacious than heaven's heights. For this, O Theotokos, the choirs and assemblies of men and angels magnify thy name. O holy martyr Fevronia, pray to God for us. O divine dove of the Master, who art covered with silver in thy virginal splendor, and art radiant in body through your asceticism, who has pinions of gold sparkling with the gleams of thy confession and thy divine blood, make a radiant in them that sing thy praise. Holy martyr Fevronia, pray to God for Conversing us. Conversing mind, unveiled with the first mind, O godly-minded Fevronia, thou didst lay hold on the uttermost of desirable things, and was deemed worthy of a blessed end. And now in splendor thou reigns with Christ thy bridegroom in ineffable bridal chambers, continually abiding in gladness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Like a rushing river thou overflows with healings to them that have recourse with faith to thine august reliquario Fevronia, thou godlike image of virginity, thou delightful blossom of nature, thou daughter of the King, who has within thee the adornment of divine glory. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O virgin, thou didst set aright the fall of woman when thou didst conceive the word, who since he is good and mighty in strength sets up them that are broken down, ardently longing after him. The glorious Fevronia cried out in gladness, after thee shall I run. O Lord Jesus, unto thee thy Lamb doth cry with a great voice. O my bridegroom, thee I love, and seeking thee I now contest, and with thy baptism am crucified and buried. I suffer for thy sake that I may reign with thee, for thy sake I die, that I may live in thee. Accept me offered out of longing to thee as a spotless sacrifice. Lord, save our souls by her intercessions, since thou art great in mercy. More honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare, more glorious than the seraphim, thee who without corruption gave us birth to God the Word, the very Theotokos, thee do we magnify. Glory to you, Christ God, our hope, glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Holy Father, bless. May Christ, our true God, with the prayers of his holy and all pure mother, with the prayers of St. John the Baptist, of the holy and all praised apostles, with the power and under the protection of the holy life giving cross and all the holy bodiless powers of heaven, at the prayers of our fathers among the saints Ninian and Cuthbert, the bishops of God, Oran of Iona, Columba of Iona, Kenneth, Ronan, Molwag, the enlightener of the Isle of Lismore, 
Whose memory we keep this day with the prayers of all the saints of all these islands, protectors of our monastery and our community. With the prayers of the holy, righteous, martyr, much suffering Febronia of Nisibis. With the prayers of the holy martyr Orentius of Anatolia and his six brethren after flesh, whose names were Farnasius, Eros, Firmus, Firminius, Syriacus, and Longinus. With the prayers of the holy righteous martyrs Leonis, Libya, and Eutropia, who were perfected in martyrdom, the first by fire, the others by the sword. With the prayers of our righteous father Simon, with the prayers of our righteous father Dionysius, the founder of the sacred monastery of the venerable forerunner on Mount Athos. With the prayers of our righteous spirit-bearing father Domitius, friend and fellow ascetic of Saint Dionysius, who was also a shepherd and abbot of the monastery of Dionysio. With the prayers of the holy righteous martyr Procopius of Varna, who was martyred in Smyrna in 1810. With the prayers of the holy, glorious new martyr George of Atalia, who was perfected in martyrdom by hanging in Asia Minor in 1823. With the prayers of our righteous father Methodius of Crete. With the prayers of our father among the saints Maximus, Bishop of Turin. With the prayers of saints Peter and Febronia of Murum, the wonder workers, who in the holy angelic habit were renamed David and Euphrosyne. With the prayers of the holy new confessor Nikon of Optina, who reposed in 1931. With the prayers of St. Amphibalus and St. Albans, with the prayers of St. Moloch of Morlach, St. Adelbert of Egmont, St. Milburga of Much Wenlock, St. Solomon of Brittany, St. Solomon III of Brittany, St. Canburga of Gloucester, and all those with them whose memory we also keep this day. And the prayers of the holy ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us. He is good and he loves mankind. Amen. And the prayers of our holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy upon us and save us. Amen.